Joining us now to talk more about this and the ramifications, what this means and the like, is one of our political experts, Steve Fish, political science professor at UC Berkeley. Steve, thanks for your time. Uh, what did you make of his introduction to America? Well, I can't quit smiling, Grant. I mean, this guy really brings the exuberance. Uh, Vice President Harris is also known as being someone who laughs a lot, who's kind of full of joy. And uh, Governor Waltz point that pointed that out in his speech. You know, we've had years of, of Trump with all the grimness. And then we've got, we've had Democrats who actually, in some ways, kind of in response, have been pretty grim themselves. But it's clear that the Harris Waltz ticket is going to be very different. And you know, it's really important that our politicians be exuberant, that they project confidence, that they look like they're having fun with what they're doing. And it looks like this pair is going to do just that. What's more, Governor Waltz really is an everyman in kind of the best sense of the term. He doesn't have a career as a, you know, millionaire hedge fund manager or some, you know, leading lawyer or scholar. He served in the in the military as a non-commissioned officer in the National Guard. He's a school teacher and a football coach. He's the kind of guy that I think a lot of people can relate to. And yet he has all the all the necessary experience. He's been a successful governor now of Minnesota for over five years. Before that, he served six terms in the House of Representatives. And he also represented a district that's largely rural and small town. And the Democrats. Democrats have been hemorrhaging support among small town and rural people for a long time. This is the kind of guy you co who can actually connect with those people. I think he can do this ticket a lot of good. Well, you definitely got the sense that it was game on uh, when he got up there. He, he sounded an awful lot like he was giving a, a locker room pep talk. That's right, Vicki. And let's face it, you know, that's really appealing to a lot of us. You know, I grew up in Kentucky and played high school football. And, and I, I just, this is the kind of guy that I, that I grew up listening to and trusting. You know, he's a, he's a regular guy. And I really do think this attitude is going to put him in good stead. Most of our politicians come from elite universities. They might pretend to be regular guys like J.D. Vance, but Vance is just, just a uh, charlatan, right? Just like Trump is. He's a faker. Waltz is the real deal. You know, he's a real guy. And I think he's going to actually do very well in his debate with, and also just standing toe to toe with Senator Vance. Josh Shapiro, the governor of Pennsylvania, seemed to be the runner up to be Harris's vice president. Uh, I don't know if you heard him uh, speak before Harris and Walls did at uh, the, the arena there in Philadelphia. Obviously, uh, Pennsylvania, one of the key battleground states. Do you think it's risky to have not gone with Shapiro? No, I think that actually Waltz was a much better and a safer choice. I think Governor Shapiro has many, many good qualities and many advantages. But first of all, he doesn't have that much experience. He's only been governor for about a year and a half. Uh, much less experience than, than, uh, than Governor Waltz has. What's more, I think Governor Shapiro, in some ways he looks like that, that guy who's kind of trying too hard. He, he's nakedly ambitious. You can really see it. Uh, what's more, he, he looks and sounds so much like Obama when he's giving speeches that I think it strikes a lot of people as is rather funny. Um, again, many good qualities, very smart guy, but I don't think he's nearly as relatable as Governor Waltz is. And so I think for those reasons uh, that uh, Vice President Harris made the right, the right choice. I might also add that uh, Governor Shapiro has been, you know, he, he's going to carry the same baggage on Israel, Gaza, that, uh, that, that President Biden did. You know, he's very staunchly uh, pro-Israel in this, in, in this conflict. He has a long history of saying and doing things that suggest that he really doesn't have much, much sympathy for the Palestinians. That could be a problem with especially young progressive voters. And in fact, that dragged down their support for President Biden. I don't think uh, Governor Waltz brings that baggage. So I think that for many reasons, Vice President Harris really made a smart choice with Governor Waltz. You alluded to this, Steve, but Shapiro is Jewish and, you know, there had been talk that maybe Harris goes with Shapiro to go all in on trying to get the centrist vote to kind of say, you know, we don't need the progressive vote. Uh, 
Shapiro obviously is supporting this ticket and gave uh, a speech that some might say was rousing. You said he reminds you of Obama uh, in terms of his skills as an orator. Uh, do you think that Pennsylvania can go blue and, and how key is that state? Pennsylvania's key, and it absolutely can, and I think it will go blue. And I think Governor Walz actually helps with that. You know, he himself is a North Midwesterner. I think he's the kind of guy who's really going to appeal to the constituencies in Pennsylvania, as well as in Michigan, Wisconsin, who the Democrats absolutely need. They include a lot of white working class voters who I think are going to find uh, Governor Walz actually very relatable. And look, I mean, his background is very much like theirs. And, you know, I think the Governor Shapiro is, you know, his background is not really like theirs. He might appeal to them, but in some ways he's really, you know, more more of you know more from the elites himself in terms of his education his personal background and indeed his personal style i really do think again the governor waltz is going to be the kind of guy who's going to be able to appeal to especially the kind of working class voters who are going to be necessary to win over pennsylvania michigan and wisconsin which are much win must win states for the democrats well, this is a matter of we saw the personality uh, then, you know, but it, there's also the policy uh, beneath it already. Uh, they're going after Waltz uh, on the right, calling him a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Um, they're tying him to, you know, a liberal socialist policies. Um, he has been described as a, a uh, oh gosh, a popular, wait, a populist progressive. Mm. Is that accurate? Well, I think he is a wolf in sheep's clothing. I, th I think he looks like a really nice guy, but I think that he's got very sharp teeth. And we've seen this. You know, we've seen him go after Trump with verve and humor and a cutting, eviscerating wit that we haven't seen from the other vice presidential contenders. I think he really is a wolf. The sheep's clothing is just that he he seems to be a regular guy. He is progressive, but, you know, he, he his whole style is not that of the kind of crazy California, you know, Bay Area progressive. It's quite the opposite. Sure, I mean, he's in favor of free school lunches for kids. Sure, he's in favor of, you know, uh, rich folks paying their, their fair share. And he's in favor of defending uh, Obamacare, you know, the Affordable Care Act. These are progressive measures. But, you know, any popular candidate who's going to rouse the base in the Democratic Party has to be at least reasonably progressive. The great thing about Governor Waltz is he is a progressive, but he doesn't come off as a kind of elitist coastal progressive. He comes off as a heartland, uh, kind of old fashioned, maybe, you know, prairie populist. And that's yeah. not at all a bad thing for the Democratic Party to have. This race has been in every sense kind of stunning. If you go back a month or so, you know, Trump gets shot in the ear and then a, a week later, Biden bows out and then it's Harris anointed almost immediately. And now she has a VP. How do you see the next, what, 91 days until Election Day going? Well, you know, I think actually Harris and Waltz can win this big. But in order to do so, they have to be out, in fr out front and center, being exuberant leaders, taking it to Trump every day. They have to show us that they are stronger, more decisive, more committed to their own ends, and frankly, much more patriotic than Donald Trump is. The Democrats tend to make this mistake, and we've seen this time and again over the last decade or so, of thinking they can win voters over just by trotting out their, their stances on issues and saying, look, we want lower prescription drug prices. Look, we want higher taxes on the rich. Look, we want more infrastructure spending. Vote for us. But the fact is they oftentimes have failed to wrap their programs in a kind of confident, what I call high dominance, rhetoric that shows that they are tougher, more decisive, stronger, and more patriotic than their opponents. If Waltz and Harris can do that, if they can wrap their progressive programs in this broader narrative about making America 
everything it can be, much the way John Kennedy did, much the way that Franklin Roosevelt did in the 20th century, I think they can win and they can win big. That means taking some risks. It means actually, you know, thinking outside the usual box that Democrats have operated in for the last decade or so. But if they do that, I think this election won't even be close. And what's going to happen is not only will they just squeak by President Trump, uh, former President Trump, prevent him from becoming President Trump again, but they will actually deal a real blow to Trumpism itself. Because if they win fairly big, and if the Democrats are able to take back the House and perhaps hold on to the Senate as well, Trumpism itself, this whole threat to democracy, will undergo a mortal blow. And this is precisely what the Democrats should be aiming for, not just squeaking by on the Republicans' abortion bans and nomination of abysmal candidates, but to really win big. All right. Everybody's on a high right now. Uh, we just well, witnessed, <laughs> I mean, in, in a sense of it, it was a very positive rally. Um, but the opposition will be preparing to come after them. If you were to hit three points where they are vulnerable, wh what are those vulnerabilities? Well, Vicki, I suppose that, you know, the fact that Vice President Harris is a Bay Area progressive uh, uh, is possibly a problem, but she can counter that easily with a narrative that casts herself as a badass prosecutor against Trump, the felon. But she has to stick with that narrative. She can't back down from that. That actually would be her counter to that. Um, you know, look, I mean, Trump and Vance will find all kinds of things to attack that are imaginary. So I think Trump today was saying something like Waltz is going to, you know, just bring America to hell and ruin everything. He's the last kind of guy who actually would do that kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I, you know, this is just a sign of how off their game that Trump and, and Vance are. Uh, you know, I think this ticket actually is is pretty invulnerable in many ways. I do think that, again, to return to an earlier point, that if Vice President Harris just focuses on policies and fails to step out and show that she is the more patriotic leader, the stronger leader, that will leave her open to Trump's charges that, you know, as Ted Cruz says, Senator Ted Cruz from, from uh, Texas, that the left hates America, they're not enthusiastic about America. She can cover herself on that one by running ads and in her whole persona, really constantly flying the flag, showing that she's not some, you know, leftist extremist who doesn't regard the United States as, as worthy of praise and, and as being the greatest country in the world. If she really doubles down on the patriotic rhetoric and seizes the flag from the right, I think she can counter that charge as well. All right. We have to leave On it there note. for time. I uh, can't wait for Trump and Harris to debate one another. Same for Vance and Walls. Should be that will very be interesting. En very enlightening. <laughs> uh, Steve Fish, professor of political science at UC Berkeley, appreciate your time. My pleasure, Grant.